Hey, my name is Steve Houston. You know who I am because you've on this channel before, most most likely. If you haven't been on this channel before, make sure you do me a favor and mash the subscribe button down there. Hit the bell. And don't forget, YouTube right now is really uh, sharing the videos to other agents like yourself that might want this information. And the only way they're doing that is if you give them that thumbs up. The thumbs up means everything. So and you did it last time for me on that video, so I'm very very grateful for the thumbs up do it again again you gotta the thumbs up Angela. you know what i'm saying it works there you're Angela's doing it the thumbs up is everything to youtube so more important than the comments more important than uh, uh even subscribing i want you to subscribe so you don't miss out on the information because we're gonna really uh, get this uh, year off to a bang where the first quarter is already over we're in the middle of a global pandemic doesn't that sound scary but look, this is where we discuss all things mortgage protection, the things that we as agents care about, hopefully, in mortgage protection and final expense. We talk about the IMO. We talk about the compensation. We talk about those pesky little MLMers out there. It's all about the recruit, recruit, recruit mentality where they do nothing and you do everything. So anyway, look, again, like I said, be sure to subscribe. This video is the reason why I brought Angela on today. This video is about face-to-face -face life insurance appointments. Are they dead? I don't intend, and I don't suggest you intend to do that either, missing out on the biggest event since the last pandemic we had, which was the H1N1, to get out there and protect some families and make some great income for the next 12 to 24 months. Angela, thanks for being here today. Uh, everyone always comments on how much they enjoy hearing from you uh, and your input um, and so uh, and your perspective. So you know, I know dealing with thousands of agents, just so everybody is aware, uh, Angela wears a lot of hats in our agency. First and foremost, she's a high level producer, which means she's out in the field and uh, has to work her own cases, but also um, she's uh, building her own agency. So she's uh, bringing on new agents and training them as well. She's our senior underwriter and product specialist, which means she strategizes nearly every single case with our agents uh, before they go out in the field, helping them determine the right product, run the rates, get the worksheet prepared, and also take the 911, the 411 calls from them 12 to 14, uh, uh, 12 to 15 hours a day. And also uh, is a trainer on how to use the phone script, works with each and every one of our agents to turn them into the best agents they can be. All areas of the business, but initially, uh, we know, Angela, we talk about this a lot, that that means you gotta be able to turn a lead into an appointment. If you can't do that, I love these analytical types that wanna come here and they wanna know everything about all the products. They'll spend six or eight months on, on reading all the, the product guides and the bill charts and the little file box their trunk all filled up and they can't make a stinking dial. In fact, they, they haven't even picked up the phone. Right, so none of that matters. It, all that means is you look good, you smell good, you look official, you got your ID badge on, but you're busting because you're not sitting kneecap to kneecap with, uh, with families. And that's what we do here, right? So uh, she teaches them the phone script um, and uh, you know how to turn that lead into an appointment and becoming a great um, appointment center. As you've heard me say before, it ain't sexy, but if you can do that, you, you're not gonna make it here. So again, title of today's talk is Angela, is face-to-face -face life insurance appointments dead? And is that the new normal? So you can share with everybody uh, for a few minutes, not only what you're doing, but also what our agents are doing and where they are having success. So um, that was a very sweet introduction. I appreciate that. Uh, I also cook dinner. I want a reward. I, sometimes I cook breakfast. I need new golf shoes. Yeah, sometimes I go golfing. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, I digress. Um, so you kind of packed a couple things in there. So there's a couple things I wanted to unpack in, in what you were saying. And the first is, you know, um, and I'll just throw this out and it's probably something for another video. Um, but you know, if you're building an agency and you have um, agents, you know, Steve and I are blessed to have a, a whole myriad of agents that we work with, you know, some that are, um, you know, jump in the pool type people immediately just jump in the pool and some that are not. And I think that if you are kind of in that newer phase of building an agency or that's something that you want to do, I think you have to be really careful that that's not where you don't spend your, a lot of your time with people that are not willing to kind of put themselves out there and try these things. 
one of the things that you and I talked about the other night was, um, you know, this is a new time for everybody. It's a new normal for everybody. Everybody's going through this. Everybody's trying to figure it out. And so to think that, um, that you can treat this the same way that you have sales in the past, where, you know, use this phone script, you'll end up with the appointment, go into the house, use this script, and it will all be fine. You know, we've got to kind of adjust because there's all types of different, uh, there's just a different dynamic. And, you know, one of the things that we kind of discovered about a week and a half ago was, you know, we were trying to make our online um, presence, that kind of non-face-to-face -face presence, really snazzy, you know, that it was all, it was all perfect. It had lots of slides it had bells and whistles so that we could project the professionalism. I think that's kind of the mindset to pro project that professionalism that we can't do when we're not sitting. We don't feel like we can do it when we're sitting face to face with somebody. And last Which is the exact opposite that we really do in the home. Right. Right. I mean, we were all of a sudden we right. became tech uh, slides and backgrounds and all that stuff and really kind of put the camera or the or this computer screen more evident between us and them which is the last thing we do the reason why you're so, so successful in this industry is your kneecap and kneecap sitting around their kitchen table in their home yeah i mean I think it, yeah i think it's totally different and well it's not totally different. Maybe that's the point. It's not totally different. It's not totally different when you're not sitting in someone's kitchen table. It shouldn't be totally different. And it's part of the reason, well, it's not part of the reason, but it sounds good. And I'll use it as my excuse that my office kind of looks the way that it does. I mean, I have, you know, my kit client files. I have, I, it's, it's a little bit messy, but it's totally me. This is the environment that I live and work in, you know, all day long. And so what we learned really last week was when we started doing uh, more of the face, the non face to face, the zoom meetings and that kind of thing was just to make it more real. You know, if you were, we, we talk about this when you're booking the appointment, when you start that conversation to book the appointment, you want to treat the opening to that phone call as if you're calling somebody that, you know, you know, if I, if I was dialing Steve as a lead, I would say, hi, Steve, it's Angela. Just the same way that I would call him if he was my spouse. I would say, hi, Steve, it's Angela. I wouldn't say, hi, Steve. You know, so it's it's really um, trying to be natural and be yourself. Uh, I think that's the number one important thing. Be yourself. Number two, um, I, uh, I am still booking face-to-face -face appointments. So I think that you, and some people are going to take this the wrong way, and you can take it however you want to take it. Um, some people have to get out of their own ways and out of their own heads. Um, we, I think as a, as a nation and as a world, we are actually pretty blessed to be dealing with a virus that we know pretty specifically how things happen and how it spreads and how to protect ourselves. And if you take certain precautions when you're in the home meeting with people, you reduce the factor of you getting the contact the virus by a huge percentage, right? So I say that to say this, I am still booking probably, now I'm not booking as many in-home presentations or face-to-face -face appointments, but I am still booking um, at least somewhere between two and six a week, I think is probably pretty fair to say. Um, yesterday, Monday, I ran, I had three appointments on Monday. I did two that were non-face-to-face, -face, one that was face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. um, one of my non-face-to-faces didn't show up, one did. Uh, wrapped that one up, went to a face-to-face -face appointment, wrote two apps in the home. And when I got to the home, it was, it was a great appointment. It was very normal. It was very natural. So you have to keep throwing that out there. You have to keep, because a lot of people are not in a paranoia state of mind. I'm not saying that people who are protecting themselves are paranoid, but some people are more nervous about it than others. And, you know, we had an agent the other day that um, he said, he made a comment and he said, you know, I love uh, porch swing appointments because they're just very comfortable. They're more safe than being inside someone's home. Uh, it gives the homeowner, uh, they're more comfortable not having you in their home physically. Uh, you can sit on somebody's porch. Uh, it's lovely weather right now and um, be yourself and have a dialogue with somebody. And the last thing I wanted to bring up was, um, product selection is still going to be key. 
it really is. Now more than ever, it's going to be very, very, very important because if you're changing the dynamic of how you're setting up that appointment, um, it is, it becomes very important to know your products and know your carriers and be able to do that on a shorter time frame. You know, uh, so whether you're working with somebody that you can contact and say, hey, I'm going to be running Zoom or Facebook or whatever appointments this afternoon. Can you be available? And I'll send you over what I need. You know, give them, let them know so that you're not sitting there without knowing what to offer your client. And you don't want to book these appointments when they're non-face-to-face -face way far out. Got to keep that time frame really short. So, um, that's great information there. And again, it goes back to what we've been talking about before. I think sometimes when, you, when, you, when you're learning something new, you, you forget the past. You forget the things that really worked in the past. Yeah. And part of that is, is that one of the things we're hearing from a lot of our agents and things that we're experiencing ourselves, Angela, with our own appointments is it's a numbers game. It's still yeah. a numbers game. And the numbers are going to be different in, all, you know, in a lot of respects with virtual sales, telesales, than they are with face-to-face. -face. What's happened is I think this whole transition of trying to learn new, new skills has created a lot of head cases. And we're, you know, part of that, which means we expect things to be different um, in, in doing it on, on telesales. And I, I think the numbers play out to where I've talked about before, 10, 6, 3. We, we're, we're, we seem to do less production, I guess, or, or, or booking less appointments on virtually. And we expect those to convert better than they do face to face. And it's not going to happen. In fact, it's probably just the opposite. I feel much more comfortable, which makes me a head case online to begin with in the home. And this is the, the being online doing these meetings like this is not natural. It will be if we do enough of it. So that's the point. It goes back to what I said all along is you gotta be you gotta be willing to be bad before you're good. Any new things you, that you're trying to attempt. But here's the thing is that the numbers are going to be slightly different because you have less control. I don't care what anybody says, you know, on, on a virtual appointment, you're trying to, to be in their house virtually. And that it, it, the better you can do that with all with all the technology, the better the better the appointment's going to be, the more success you're going to have in closing. But still, at the end of the day, when they can hang up or they can disconnect, and you and, and you're not sitting in their home, it's going to be different. And I think I think you and I have found that out. Maybe and maybe that's us. Maybe that's a head case thing we got going on ourselves, and and we're working out. Well, you know, we're committed to making it, making making uh, getting really good at this process because ultimately. Uh, I know you and I, Angela, we for years have thrown away leads where they simply would not meet with us in person. Right. Well, now we can convert some of those to, to, to virtual sales. So I think you're going to pick up a certain percentage of your business. Now, remember, virtual sales or telesales, the persistency numbers are not the same. You want that to be a certain percentage of your business. I really don't believe you want it to be all your business. Any yeah, comments? I think, you, I think you absolutely have to. And that's something that we have really been focusing on the last you know, week, week and a half is you absolutely without question have to increase your numbers because, you know, if you are a super, super good closer in the home and maybe you close one or two out of three appointments, um, your numbers are not going to be the same when you're not in the home, when you're not, you know, in somebody's home, there's a, there's all kinds of dynamics that play in that. And so it's kind of funny to me when people know that their closing ratio is going to be lower. And so instead of booking more appointments, they book less appointments. Right. And then when you have only have one for the week or one every three days and it doesn't close, you know, it's devastating to you. Oh my gosh, it didn't close. See, it doesn't work. You, you've got it in this, in this new dynamic. How many times can I say the word dynamic today? You have to compensate, I think, with numbers. I totally agree. And what happens is we end up booking one appointment or two appointments a day. If we have a 50% closing ratio, the likelihood of getting anything, or you might get one, but it has to go really well. And I yeah. think you, you cannot do that. You have to have five, six, or seven appointments a day virtually if you intend on converting into them. Let's talk about uh, the new challenges buyers face uh, in this atmosphere of the global pandemic. From a, from a product specialist, senior underwriter, what are you seeing? Well, you know, I think that this also leads to the sense of urgency. If you think that you're going to wait a week or two weeks or a month and, you know, until you get all your ducks in a row and get your presentation down before you start making dials and then you're going to be able to put people into products, it's not going to happen um, because so many of the carriers are making big dynamic shifts. And, you know, what I told one of my clients the other day was, What's happening right now is that carriers are beginning to close the window. They're closing the news a bit because they are trying to minimize um, their 
uh, risk, right? And uh, especially for the elderly. So we know that there's a huge risk for people that are over the age of 70, especially if they have other medical conditions. So what's happening is um, companies like Transamerica, Nassau Re, are eliminating certain age groups, right, from coverage at all. So that means you don't even bother sending the applications. Other carriers are, you know, um, are putting a pause to even evaluating applications for people that have been one tested as positive, um, even though they might be still, they might be asymptomatic, they might be at home, they might not be in the hospital, they might be totally, you know, fine, other than the fact that they've been tested positive, um, doesn't matter. Um, three, some carriers are beginning to add questions in like, have you been exposed to someone uh, that knowingly was tested positive? Do you have a family member or, um, you know, a coworker, someone that you, that you know has been definitively diagnosed as positive because then they assume that you've been exposed. So now is not the time to wait because you're going to have these insurance companies trying to mitigate this risk. And the only way to do that is to begin to not insure certain people. Yeah. So other companies are writing in exclusions into their policies where they won't pay the death benefit. Mm -hmm. You die from anything related to the COVID virus. The decline, postponed coverage, yeah. thing like that. Uh, over certain ages uh, or having pre-existing health issues, what they call it, a, an immune deficiencies, uh, recent uh, or even planned foreign travel. If you came back from China <laughs> in the last 30 days, you're gonna, be, you're gonna get knocked down. Um, you know, symptoms re resembling the coronavirus or, you know, had the coronavirus and had made a full recovery. So, like I said, in course, then you had the exclusions, which um, the, the Trans-American as our raising has said, are stop issuing policies altogether. So, uh, that's, a, that's a, it's a very valid point. Um, so, what else did you want to, is, is valuable, do you think, from an underwriting standpoint? I, th I think the bottom line is, is that right now, especially, I mean, this, this is the case with, any, with, with anybody. Uh, or with any time, pandemic or not, that, um, I mean, you're, you're, I mean, we, everybody, I, I told a client yesterday, he goes, well, you know, we're going to take our chances. You know, we, we don't plan on dying. Well, neither did Kobe Bryant and, and his daughter, they, they went out to the helicopter, board the helicopter. They weren't planning on dying either. So same thing applies to this coronavirus. I mean, the, face, the fact of the matter is, is, is most of us are going to get this thing, supposedly, that's what they said. So if you need coverage, and your clients do, they need to move quickly. Yeah, I mean, it's not, again, now is not the time to waste. And, um, you know, we know that we're gonna see an insurgence arise as we start to lessen, uh, as, as people start to go back to work, as the states, counties and states and the federal government begins to loosen the kind of, you know, the, the shelter in places. We know that as soon as people start to commingle again, we're gonna see an elevation in cases in hospitalizations and in deaths. And so insurance companies are trying to protect themselves. This is, um, you know, they, they, they're just not prepared to have a massive amount of people over the age of 70 buy coverage one day and have to write an obscene amount of checks, you know, the next day. New agents always have a, a struggle with that. You know, whether well, they're in the insurance business, they, they sell life insurance, right. But they want the clean people and they're trying to remove themselves from as much risk as possible. That's the bottom yeah, line. The balance. I mean, they're yeah. not, the insurance company itself won't be in business in 30 days if they take 10,000 people and they collect, you know, an $80 premium and they turn around and are, are stroking checks for 10, 20, 30, $100,000 and they've collected, you know, one month's worth of premium. So, so it's- So you had how many points this week so far? I mean, you don't, you don't, get, you don't get to that and do much personal production anymore, but- No, I think so far this week I've had three or four. I think it's been four. You don't have any apps? Uh, apps, uh, three apps. Three apps or how much APV? About 35, 37, somewhere between 35 and $3,700. So $4,000 of APV. It'll do. Not, not, a, not a bad part-time job. <laughs> That's the whole point. Hey, did the coronavirus come up in that conversation when you went home? You, I'll tell you how it came up. Um, when I go to a face-to-face -face appointment, I do the whole, I mean, I don't bring my own chair or my own stool. Some, some of our agents do, and I think it's great, but I don't because I'm lazy. Uh, I do do the gloves. Um, I minimize what I take in with me, so I take very little into the house with me. Um, I do the gloves. I do the mask. 
and I bring wipes, antibacterial wipes with me. And so when I'm, when they open the door, you know, there I am in my garb and we went into the house and the wife asked me, you know, does it make you uncomfortable that we're not wearing masks? And I said, no, I said, would it make you uncomfortable if I took this hot mask off? And she said, not at all. And so um, that was our conversation about coronavirus. And um, we sat on opposite sides of the table and we never, it was kind of one of those situations where they would have really, she was such a sweet lady. She would have popped up and given me a hug and I definitely would have shaken their hands, but we made plans to meet again in a few months and, and be able to shake hands. But that was the extent of the conversation. Yeah. And I think, you get, I mean, clearly you're going to find that no matter what. You're gonna have people that are just hard, hard line. I need to meet with nobody, no place. And so you do those on the web meetings. But there are a lot of people out there that, are, that aren't really paying attention, that aren't, that aren't that concerned, uh, or they've already had it and, and they're, they're immune to it, whatever. Uh, the point is, is, is standing down right now, it, you know, it, it's gonna be much more difficult to get started back again if you ever do get started back again. And you're not doing the job where we meant, to, if, if you stand down right now, you're in this thing only for the money you have a product that these people need and if they get the yeah, Angela, if they get the application in let's just say today and they come down with coronavirus next week are they covered yeah i mean there's very the few point so why there. wouldn't you go out there and do that i mean this right. it just makes sense to go out there and you know and, and do the best job you can for your clients and not be, you know not stand down when they when these people are, are at, the, at a time when they're most in need you know, there's a lot of people that there are a lot of elderly that are very scared about this virus, but they're yeah. more scared about the fact that they now are have kind of come face to face with this reality and they don't have anything in place for a spouse, for their kids, for burial, to protect the mortgage, none of it. So sometimes you're going to meet with people where if you can kind of allay their fears about, I'm going to take the precaution world, we can sit outside um they're they're more concerned about being able to get coverage in place because they know that the, the the risk to them now is even worse so i think if you're not if you're not if you're not putting yourself out there i don't know then it is really about the money i think i agree well Angela, i appreciate it hey listen there's a lot of reasons why your clients need to meet with you right now you got non-med coverage that's still available you got living benefits that they desperately need uh, do a need assessment, find out what uh, their products uh, options are, determine how much coverage that they uh, qualify for, whether it's term or permanent. Get out there and get the job done. Don't forget, if you like this kind of stuff, we're going to do more of it. If you like Angela here, which I know you do, give the video a thumbs up. Remember, it's all about the thumbs up. You know, smash the thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell down there somewhere so you get instant notifications because we do a lot of this stuff live. It's all kinds of stuff. Hey, this is how you do a virtual appointment. You 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 you, you gotta you gotta do the hand signals because yeah. you can't you can't really draw it out. And if you draw it out, you, they can't see you most of the time, and you can't really do a whole lot of this. You gotta you know when I when I explain decreasing term, I do one of these things here, and I go you know your term's going down, you know, and it's you know whatever, or it's going up, or it's level coverage. You learn those skills. It's exciting. So you have to, you have to, we would, we would love, how do you do the heart? We would love, uh, if you, you would hit the bell. That's terrible heart, yeah. That's good. And give us Just a like. thumbs up. <laughs> Angela, thumbs up. Appreciate you being here today, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.